it says a lot that Russia is having to turn to a country like North Korea to seek to bolster its defense capacity uh, in a war that it expended, uh, expected would be over in a week, that in September of 2023, uh, it is going to North Korea to get munitions uh, to try to continue to grind out on the battlefield in Ukraine. We have continued to squeeze North uh, <coughs> Russia's defense industrial base, and they are now going about looking to whatever source they can find for things like artillery ammunition. That's what we see going on now, and we will continue to call it out, and we will continue to call on North Korea to abide by its public commitments not to supply weapons to Russia that will end up killing Ukrainians. Providing weapons to Russia for use on the battlefield to attack grain silos and the heating infrastructure of major cities as we head into winter uh, to try to conquer territory that belongs to another sovereign nation, this is not going to reflect well on North Korea, and they will pay a price for this. Uh, in the international community. We have also imposed sanctions, specific targeted sanctions, to try to disrupt any effort to use North Korea as a conduit or as a source for weapons going to Russia. We did so as recently as mid-August. Uh, and we have continued to convey privately as well as publicly to the North Koreans and asked allies and partners to do the same our view that they should abide by their publicly stated commitments that they're not going to provide these weapons. What has changed in their calculus is not something that I can speak to. That's in the mind of Kim Jong-un, and he obviously will be the ultimate decision maker. But we will continue to look for opportunities uh, to dissuade the North Koreans from taking this step, to get others to do the same, uh, and to report to the world what we are seeing in terms of the actively advancing discussions that are taking place between these two countries.